welcome to my channel. Today we're going to have a sketchbook tour and I'll show you some of the tools that I use and the techniques that I use. Hopefully this is inspiring for you to experiment with abstract drawing and making marks to develop your own abstract style. My specific style is very influenced by calligraphy. I've been a calligrapher for 30 years now and I love calligraphy, I love lettering, typography, and the communications aspect of it as well. But when I paint, I don't make it a legible writing form. I just use it as a basis of making marks that have a lot of contrast. This was from 2020, which was a tough year for everybody with the pandemic and a lot of things going on in the world. So it's not as full as some of my sketchbooks are. So just a disclaimer, this, this word does appear now and then. Um, I don't know, sometimes I just like playing with swear words. So this is um, obviously a mess and it's okay. I was probably on the subway because there's these drip marks everywhere. Um, and you can see too, sometimes if there's a drip mark, I try to make the most of it and I just like kept drawing off of it. I don't consider this like a, a very great final finished piece, but it's so interesting because if you turn it around, now I see a little face here. And then I also see something that looks like an elephant not intentional at all but it's really fun sometimes to just fill up a page full of marks and then go back and see what you can find in there you can see how much i use calligraphy but it's not always every single mark uh, i can go back in and make little teeny tiny details and then i see this 48 here and i have no idea why that's there or why i picked 48 I'm not 48. I'm far from it on over that. So I'm not sure why that's there, but I don't know. I guess I just felt like it. This is one of my favorite tools to use. This is the Pilot Parallel Calligraphy Fountain Pen. And what I really love about this, it has a metal tip, which is also called a nib. And what that means is you can get these super sharp, thin lines, and thick lines. And the edges never wear out. And you can also switch it out to colors, red, blue, green. So it's basically, you just swap out these ink cartridges. So this is one that's obviously very saturated in color. Usually I make the black marks first, and then I put the color in between the marks. And this time I laid down the color first, and then I went back in with the, with the marker. This was done October 3rd, 2020. The seven train from Long Island City to Hudson Yards and back. And if you're a New Yorker, you know exactly that train and the, the straight shot it is and how cool Hudson Yards is now. It's completely transformed in the last few years. This is one of my favorite pads of paper to use. First of all, it's pretty inexpensive. It's got a spiral binding which means when you open it you can lay it flat you can get pretty clean lines smooth but it also has enough texture and enough weight that you can pretty much fill it with watercolor and it holds up so i highly recommend this series of paper mixed media now back to the sketchbook this was um, actually just a practice i was messing around with a steel dip pen steel nib and playing around with the splatters on a bigger piece of paper. And I actually took my phone and took a slow motion video of it because I wanted to see what the splatter looked like in slow motion. When I'm making a mark and trying to push the pen to make a splatter, sure enough, that pinky whipped out and then I guess that was a balance thing. But that was pretty funny to see. This is when I had um, a blue magic marker with me. Something I try to strive for is some kind of hierarchy. So if you have a lot of busy marks going on in, on one side of the paper, then I try to balance that out with, with some calm areas so that there's also white space that keeps the eye moving around and it doesn't get so crammed that you don't know where to look first. You wanna help the viewer look through the painting and you do that with the visual hierarchy. 
I like these Marvy markers a lot. They are fairly black and crisp. These allow you to go a little faster and have that ink flow consistently. So kind of a lot going on here. Oh, this is when I started playing bass again. So I hadn't played in a lot of years, but like a lot of people with the lockdown and just having more time on my hands, I decided to start playing bass and it was really fun. October 20, 2020, Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Oh, at the WNYC Transmitter Park. That is the coolest park. It's very expansive. It's right by the water. They've got benches everywhere, green grass, um, lots of places to sit and bring a blanket, or you can walk out on the pier. This was one of the last nice days before winter, so I decided to go there to do some drawing. And I actually have a picture of it on my Instagram. And it's funny because you could see sort of an, a resemblance of the pattern here and the sunset in the background. Oh, and another thing that I see here. Oh, two fishies kissing. Oh, that's sweet. And this actually looks like sort of a seahorse. So while we're on the subject of water, this is the Yasutomo Niji water brush. I love these things. So this is a synthetic paintbrush, meaning that the, the hairs are probably like fiberglass or something like that. And then you fill the cartridge with just plain water. And then that allows you to take a watercolor kit like this. And then you always have a way to make watercolors without having to have like a cup of water. I can sit anywhere and I have eight colors which is more than enough to make a painting. This is one that I'm using right now. I have a few others that I've tried and a few new ones that I bought that I have not tried yet. There's a lot of travel kits out there so watch for one of the next videos I'm going to compare these kinds of watercolor travel kits and just test them out and see which ones you know have the best little system for traveling the color quality the ease of using it things like that if you're interested in that let me know in the comments and let me know what do you use if you do use one I would love to know maybe I'll add that to the the little video where I review these things and we'll see which ones come out on top so this was on 1014 at Moonlight Mile, which is a place in Brooklyn. Didn't want to be home anymore, and they had outdoor seating, so I went there and was sick of the news, sick of politics, and I just went and had some time to just sit out on the sidewalk and draw. And that's what came out. I can't tell if that looks like an eyeball or maybe a disco ball. Let's see what the date is. Oh, Union Square, October 25th. Yeah, I just wanted to get out, enjoy the sunshine, so I took the train, the L train, and then sat on the steps at Union Square. I see this weird little guy that showed up, which looks like, a, I don't know, a baby something who's got a bottle and one eye. <laughs> so this is obviously very different than what's in the rest of the book. I must not have had my calligraphy pen with me. Sometimes when I'm drawing, something will just start forming itself. It's kind of got this robot face going on thing. That's why I don't like planning or trying to have a specific idea of what I'm going to draw. I start with one mark and then I decide the next mark based off of the last mark. Um, and that allows me to just let it happen. Just let things kind of create themselves. Oh, now we are into 2021. January 16th on the subway from Brooklyn to go to Best Buy to get a new keyboard. Very exciting. Oh, Super Bowl Sunday, February 
you know now that I think about it this does kind of look like the stitches of a football and I know I'm reaching but you know I see that in there and I was not too crazy about the Chiefs losing so I don't know the date or where I was when I did this one but it's it's very light it's not as heavy it's a little more textury and scratchy 226 21 must have been on a again on the subway probably and one thing I wanted to mention too is I spin my pad when I'm drawing I will make a few marks and then turn it this way and then turn it this way and then turn it as I go and that's why I never really know what's going to pop out because something might look a certain way this way but if you turn it upside down it might look completely different and not sure why there's a five here if you know why there's a five in here please let me know 214 2021 on the subway L train once again I actually love the challenge of drawing on a shaky train. I went to 8th Avenue, which is the last stop on the L train, and then walked back towards Union Square, where there's a Nordstrom rack, and I actually found this funky pair of lightning bolt earrings, which are these. So this one I remember I painted on election night. It kind of looks like a big zipper. I just think it's fun to play with spacing and when I'm messing around with kind of black letter type of marks, the thing about black letter calligraphy is it's important to keep the spacing really tight. So I just try to work on that with patterns and it makes a pretty cool movement when you start moving the marks and then changing the size a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I hope that you are fired up to go out and make some art. Don't forget to subscribe.